Yes, my people, as it is hot, it don't happen. No. There's no way you will watch this video and you will not love Peter B. This video now won't expose a lot of things. It won't tell us how wicked, selfish, and stinging our present government day and some presidential candidate when they run for this election at the day. And this video now, it won't tell you now how selfless Peter B. Day. Please, my obedient family, just then share this video because we need to tell many people. Our things they go on and they need to wise up and know the one vote for before that day of election. Please hit the like button, comment and share this video so I means to go viral. Make we educate a lot of people. Make us share them. What is he supposed to get? Remember, you have former governor Bola Tinubu, so it means he's enjoying all of this. Now this is what uh, uh, if Governor Babachan de Fashala leaves office today, this is what he'll be getting. 100% annual basic uh, salary now of incumbent, of incumbent salary for life. So whatever the current governor is earning is what he would be getting, which is 100%. He's going to get that for life. The governor gets six new cars every three years. I mean, at that rate, you would say, well, the governor may soon become a car dealer because if you get six cars every three years, do the calculation yourself. Over the course of, uh, say, 12 years, he would have uh, a lot of cars to sell. Then the deputy governor gets five cars every three years and uh, a house. The governor now, this is for the governor. The governor gets a house in Lagos and one in Abuja. And what does the deputy governor get? The deputy governor gets one house in Lagos only. Now, the governor and of course the deputy governor and their family are entitled to free medical health care and their family free medical health care. Now for life, there's no cap. There's no provision. It could be 10 million, it could be 5 million, it could be 100 million, 200, no cap at all. Now, there's also cook, provision for cook, steward, gardener, and other domestic staff. All of them pensionable for the governor. And furniture allowance, he gets 300% of annual basic salary every two years. House maintenance uh, is 10% of annual basic salary. The governor's security, well, the governor's entitled, the former governor now, in the, he's entitled to two SSS operatives, or one, of course, uh, a female officer, and then eight policemen. Now, imagine how many policemen we have in this country. Now, you have these former governors getting eight of them eight just to protect them then you can imagine how many policemen would have left to protect the citizens uh, the deputy governor now gets uh, for security now one sss operative and two policemen now the governor gets for pa 25 percent of annual basic salary car maintenance our pensions collected by former as ministers and members of the national assembly the court also directed the attorney general of the federation and minister of justice abuba kamalami to challenge the illegality of state's pension laws, permitting former governors and other former public officials to collect such pensions. The judgment came on the heels of the invalidated pension law for former governors and other ex-public officers in Zamfara State, which provided for the upkeep of former governors and former public officials to the tune of 700 million naira annually. Joining us now to discuss this and other national issues is former governor of Anambra State, Mr. Peter Obi. Your Excellency, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sir. Good to have you uh, on the program. I, well, I mean, when the pension law the controversy erupted, I said, oh, now I know uh, the secret <laughs> of your, you know, looking uh, so comfortable and nice. You've been collecting pension <laughs> and benefits <laughs> and allowances out of office. <laughs> but what's your reaction? How does this work out? Do you support the move in Zamfara State to repeal the law and, uh, you know, the outrage? on the part of Nigerians that when you leave office as governor, you should just go back to your former work and stop collecting uh, public funds. What's your take? Well, Ruben, let me start by first correcting you. Yes. I left office about um, in 2014, mm. call it 2013 actually, because it was about first quarter of 2014, so 2013. And since I left office to today, nobody has paid me one naira. I've not received one naira. Is it that you have either, not made the request? No, no, I said I have not received one naira, either directly or indirectly. Nobody has supported me in any way or anything because you say that's why I'm looking very good. <laughs> I'm only looking very good because uh, for me, I had a temporary office which I served and moved on with my life. And God be the glory. You have seen the difference between Asfadibola and Kinobo and Peter B in terms of selfishness and selflessness. You can see the kind of pension package that Aswadi Bola Metinubo signed into law in Lagos 
because this pension package you, you saw was signed into law by Tinubu. He did not only sign it into law, he was the one that wrote it as an executive bill and sent it to the Labour State House Parliament. That is the homongous pension that Aswad Bola made Tinubu package for himself. Tobi never did anything like that. He never tried to take care of his pension, his retirement from government house. He was contented. And he keeps saying it. You listen to him there, where he said that he has never been given anything. He has not received any cover from an Amra State government. And he has never demanded for it. He is contented with what he has. This is somebody who has governor of Anambra State, it will be, did not allocate land to himself or to any member of his family. In fact, there was a land that could have legitimately been allocated to him. He felt that he doesn't deserve it, having been governor for just a few, a few months. He handed the land over to somebody who he believed deserves it more, a retirement civil servant. That's why I tell you, when you watch these things finish, there's no way you will not love P2B more than Aswad Bola Metin. P2B did not empower any member of his family to be collecting tax on behalf of Labour State, on behalf of uh, Anambra State government. He did not set up any company to be collecting tax for Anambra State government. He walked away to go and face the business he was doing. before he became governor. Because he believed that he has a second address, unlike other politicians, who place politics as their only occupation. But you can see, compare him to Aswad Bola Metin. Look at the Homo Constitution, Aswad Bola Metin, package for himself. It shows you that if you elect, elect somebody like him, governor, he will be there just to take care of himself first before thinking about the ordinary masses that were taking into power. That is what he did in Lagos, and that's what he will repeat in Abuja. You look at Pitobi. He left with clean records. DFCC never looked for him. ICPC never looked for him. Code of conduct never looked for him. You cannot say the same thing about Aswad Bola Metin. Look at what Obasanjo wrote about Aswad Bola Metin. We'll go and read his Obasanjo's memoir, former president Obasanjo's memoir, My Watch. He said that he is former uh, chairman of uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Nuhuri Badu. He investigated governors during the time of Aswad Bola Metin. He said that there was a report which Nuburibado handed over to him containing 28 governors that were indicted of corruption. Aswad Bola Metin, according to Obasanjo, his own case was the worst. But Obasanjo in that same book regretted the relationship that Nubu Ribado later developed with Tinubu, which according to Obasanjo, quite washed Tinubu. And what happened, according to Obasanjo, is all a part of uh, Ribado's quest to become president of Nigeria in 2011, when he now went to Nubu to uh, Tinubu to seek the ticket of ACN. And you know, uh, Tinubu was the leader of ACN. So Masanjo was alleging that there was a lot of compromises in the process. So you can now see the reason why Masanjo never endorsed Tinubu. Because he has records on Tinubu. And he has written it in his book. I'm here to see anywhere Tinubu has challenged the content of that book. 
The book is everywhere. My watch, you can go and look for it on Amazon, Conga, Jumia, it's everywhere. It should be a book that every Nigerian should have in his home, in his library. He said a lot of things about corruption and Tinubu. You know, so when you compare the two of them, you know that Peter B is far better and can be trusted with national resources, public resources, more than Ashwari Bola Metinubu. Because Ashwari Bola Metinubu is somebody who, from his records, who takes care of himself a lot and his family. Look at his, his, his what is. His wife is senator, representing Lagos. One of his children is in charge of the markets in Lagos. So many of his family members are involved in governance. You can't say that of Peter B. Peter B practices politics the way that is being done in the Western world, where you come to serve and to live with your integrity intact. There is no way your integrity will be intact when you run a state like Lagos since 1999. And you determine what happens there. You determine who becomes governor, who becomes senator, who becomes House of Reps member who becomes local government chairman, who become state house assembly members. Everything revolves around you. We all know that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is what we have been getting in Lagos. Such a person like Tinobu, there is no way, there is no way he will be accountable to anybody. He will not be accountable to anybody. If he comes to Abuja, what he will do is to surround himself with the kinds of yes men that he surrounded himself with in Lagos, who does his bidding at the detriment of Lagosians. Look at it. He has been in charge of Lagos. He has been the de facto governor of Lagos since he left office. Yet there is no good hospital that could treat Tinubu when he is sick. He always flown out, flown to the UK or to Paris. And these things are paid by the taxpayers because under the pension law that he signed, they take care of his health anywhere it is, at home or abroad, and his family members for life. Where else can you get that kind of arrangement in any sense society but that's what we have in Lagos of course other states copied from Lagos but still Lagos has the best in terms of taking care of former governors because Tinubu made sure that every angle is taken care of to ensure life of luxury for him as form and government. But what this country need is a leader who will think about the people, who will not think about self, a leader who will think about the man in the street, the beggar in the street, the truck pusher in the street, the man that is looking for job, the civil servant that have not been paid his salary, the retiree who have not been given his pensions and graduated, yet the governors are, co are collecting homogeneous amounts of pensions and gratuity and severance packages. The same thing applies to National Assembly lawmakers. Look at Peter Obi, how he takes life. He takes life easy, with contentment, 
like most of the credible Western politicians. That is what this country needs. This country don't need people who think about themselves and their family members, who think about their economic well-being, empowering themselves to become the richest person in Nigeria or the richest man in Nigeria or to be the richest politician in Nigeria so that thousands will be lining up in your house to be collecting arms and you think you are benevolent. They are only coming to collect part of what you have taken from them. <laughs>